We are in Moonvember, right? The average returns in November is even better than October. In October, average return is 22%. So we came in a little under this year. We got 11%, a little bit under 22%, but still we eked out double digits. So that is a win. But in average, in November or moon member, 43%. Mostly because 2013, okay, so this is skewed because in 2013, uh, November netted a 450% return. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever see a month ever going forward where we will see a 450% return. So, you know, if you, if you discount that year, if you average out all the other years, it's more probably in line with like a double digit, okay? Or a single digit because there are years where you can see there are red, right? So that, that, that 43% is actually gone. If you look at the medium, it's more like 7%. So nevertheless, it's still normally a good, good month. But here's the thing. We know this month, there are many catalysts. Next week, in the US, we have a big elections coming up. I mean, many elections, not just one, but the biggest one is we will get a new president and then we'll go get a new Congress. We'll go get a lot of new things, okay? That's gonna be a big, big thing. And number two, we're gonna get another FOMC meeting and we're gonna get another rate cut and we're gonna see what Fed Chair Powell's gonna say. So we have two big, huge events coming up next week. Let's go set the stage for not only Moonvember, but also the Santa rally that's going to happen in December. And there's going to be another FOMC meeting in December too, with another rate cut. So we got a lot of big catalysts happening next two months. Even though a lot of you guys I know are not in the U.S., but like it still applies to you guys. <laughs> it still applies because most of the most of the volume is in the U.S. But what's better is the non-lettuce hands, the people that are actually holding and buying and DCAing. Right, the ones that truly believe, the ones that are not panicking at seventy thousand Bitcoin, the ones that are dollar cost averaging, preparing for the future, knowing that all time high is just around the corner, that's even better because you know why, Larry Fink and BlackRock, they're not, they're not worried. Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy, they are not worried. The large whales. They're not worried. They are all go continue to load up while the retail lettuce hands, they're the ones that are worried and they're just going to keep on selling, right? So here's an example of whale bought 780 million at an average price of 67,000 since March 14th. Unrealized profit of 42 million. That's a whole lot. That's nearing a billion dollars. That's a huge, huge amount. Who knows what billionaire that belongs to, right? Outside of those things, uh, as for charts, well, I mean, it hasn't changed since October. Looking at these long, long-term charts, nothing has changed. That giant cup and handle that I've been showing you guys, you guys, you guys could see it. You know, that giant cup and the handle, breaking out in the handle every single time, really. You could see every single, uh, every single halving, basically. You could see that, that handle forming, and then we break out of the handle. That's still in play. And this is what it looks like. And we have broken out of it. We just haven't seen a huge huge pump upwards yet so as we move forward into november 
and December and the Santa rally and a new new regime takes over. And as we move into the new year with more rate cuts, with liquidity injections and everything else that's going to be happening next year. This is what it's going to probably going to look like, right? Uh, this is what happened in 2020. A lot of you guys remember what 2020 was like. It was not a good year. It was a horrible year. It was a very horrible, scary year. People were sitting at home, bored, not doing anything. Not only that, people were scared to go outside. People were scared for their lives. Economies were shut down. People couldn't travel. You know, it was looking pretty rough. Um, but still, despite all that, you had Bitcoin do its thing and continue upwards and kept doing what it always have um, in the past and just, you know, just did its thing and just kept going. That in 2020, that little scam wick that went downwards i you know you call it a scam wick it really wasn't but that was just true panic selling that brought bitcoin down to thirty eight hundred dollars three thousand eight hundred dollars in 2020 march of 2020 i remember it vividly it started out the day at ten thousand then the day opened the the stock market crashed i remember dow had a negative three thousand day and Bitcoin crashed from 10,000 down to 3,800. A lot of people, I was streaming that day too. A lot of people are like calling for 1,000 Bitcoin. It did not happen. We did a V-shaped recovery over the next few days. We cr crawled back to 10,000. And then <clears throat> after a few more grueling days or weeks, we finally <laughs> broke out after you know several weeks or whatever right we'll probably go see the same thing so despite horrible 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 conditions we still did it this time around we don't have horrible 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 conditions we don't we have actually improving conditions so just imagine that and we have the institutions that are ready to FOMO in Bitcoin. That's a big difference. We didn't have institutions. We didn't have BlackRock FOMOing in tens of billions and, and possibly putting hundreds of billions into Bitcoin. That, that's a big difference this time around. So I can't even imagine as we move forward in this cycle what the differences will be. Um, I think it's going to be very different. I think it's going to be very, very, very different. 